we meet with you again for a midday broadcast and today is a great day of hope our reading fell on Isaiah 40 Isaiah 40 and we know Isaiah 39 to 40 begins a different session or season for the prophet Isaiah at the same time this morning there was such an intense feeling for family the mother part of God, the mothering God, El Shaddai, God of many breasts, the one who keeps us upon his chest and looks after us and Moses got it right when he said, uh, are you expecting me to carry this people, the Israel people through the wilderness as a nursing father? He got it right. He didn't like the idea but it got to him that this is the only way to get a rebellious people to listen to God and to learn the ways of God. So I heard the cries of mothers all over the land, how to keep our children, you know, they have no school, uh, what to do with them, what will happen to their future, how to keep them engaged, particularly if they had important exams, how to keep them off the smartphone. You now I've done a lot of lectures on the smartphone and the digital screen and how to help them through it. And a lot of mothers thinking like that and maybe fathers getting impatient at home and maybe wives getting impatient with fathers you know some places yes uh, having problems also reported problems but the mother's cry was turning into a cry of hope travail was turning into prevail and uh, i heard the sound of mourning turning away into dancing then there was beauty coming out of the ashes and then I got the Lord saying I heard him saying oh, preparation is coming to an end operation is to begin now in Sri Lanka May 11th uh, they are hoping to release the lockdown and see so we have just six days this already half this day is gone and uh, so we have five days and a half according with this day uh, so and I heard beauty from ashes oil of joy instead of mourning gladness for sadness uh, mother's cry then I heard and I saw Jochebed delivering a child and protecting this child and Jochebed saw the beauty of the child and parents at this time that you will see the beauty of God's call upon your children this shut up time when you felt losing hope when will their schools begin in our country we don't know when those schools will begin but be a judge of bed see the call of God on your child maybe the child is only three months old maybe five years 10 15 but see the beauty of God upon the child and Jachabed said I, I have to preserve this child and they did the best to preserve the child the Jachabed sighing but taking hope taking courage and she makes a basket of bulrushes imagine that morning they knew can't keep this little bonny boy and Hebrews 11 says Jachabed's parents saw the child and saw the beauty of God a certain nobility of God is how Hebrews 11 uh, verse um, about Jochebed, about Jochebed seeing the child it says uh, by faith Moses when he was born was hidden for three months 1123 Hebrews and by his and his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child a child of destiny that's a Greek word there and they were not afraid of the king's edict so and she went that early morning with Miriam because if women go to water the Nile terrible Nile with crocodiles it may be that uh, the, the, the Egyptian soldiers will not take much note because it's two women going for water and then she picks up every reed of bulrushes out of which papyrus is made she knows according to a selection of the strength of each bulrush each bamboo the child's life will rest on that and this mother chooses chooses and makes a wicker basket and then she has already arranged for the pitcher to be there so the water will not come in she plasters it in the inside and in the outside and she puts her best garment after all she was a slave woman long time in slavery but the best garment she had to give this morning boy and across the river Nile she saw the majesty of her fear of the brutality and on this side of the Nile she sees her pittance 
her poor state but she takes hope with God and she says would to God my son becomes the deliverer and it is Pharaoh's daughter the prince princess who gave the boy the name Moses drawn out of water and scripture is always true Moses is an Egyptian bird of that time drawn out of water archaeologically true what the Bible says and she sees the massive storehouses of Egypt on the other side and here she sees the pittance of their existence she sees the massive yachts and ships that are going down the aisle and she sees a little wicker basket but God is with her she's delivering a deliverer and in God's providence just at the time and the and the crocodiles are waiting with their jaws wide to swallow up the church that is being given a new lease of life by a jocha bed in a wicker basket will Moses survive will the might of Egypt the might of Babylon the might of the IT world, the might of entertainment world, the might of global religion, the might of globalists, isn't it all ready with a post-COVID world, how to take it all to their side. And God is nurturing a nation deliverer. God is nurturing many nation deliverers right now. And the holy woman clad in the sun, Revelation chapter 12, is birthing sons and daughters to the throne of God that they will remain right here but with the rod of God to deal with the resistant rebellious pots and to deal with the staff of God on the potter's wheel making pots again reshaping that everyone who is willing to turn to God and God's own people their pots are being reshaped at this time on the potter's wheel circumstance and the thing circumstances and the finger of God the word of God we are speaking making pots for another season to receive God's grace God's provision God's industry Yesterday we saw the seeds of industry. Today we are seeing the pots of industry waiting to take over agriculture, fisheries, governance in a nation, what God has given within the nations. And each nation arising to God greatness, not wanting to oppress other nations. This is what these fragile pots are being made for. And then the rebellious iron pots, the bronze pots, the richer ones are looking with disdain at these fragile things. What they can what can they do? Just the way Goliath looked at David and said, Am I a dog to send a boy at me? But then these are God pots. Beloved, God is raising you up in the field, you know, a docus or whatever it is, God is raising you up to be a nation minder, nation benefactor. Every pot is being made for such a time, judge a bed. So she sees on the other side the power of Pharaoh and Egypt. But on this side, she keeps a wicker basket. And in God's time and God's breath, she just gives a whoo to the baby. And God sends a wind across the bulrushes. And God's breath is driving, guiding, gliding. And uh, crocodiles can't get it because the hand of God has come between the crocodiles and this nurturing church the deliverer of the nations Moses drawn out of water and right at the time Pharaoh's daughter is stepping into the water this wicker basket made up bulrushes everyone chosen by Jochebed with such utmost care and the princess says I'll take this child and Miriam of course offers uh, other ch offers a mother, a nursing mother, and Joshua has Moses for about three to three and a half years. That's the time of weaning of breast milk those days. That was about time. So she has three and a half years to teach Moses the faith of the fathers. Was she successful? Yes, he remembered the faith of the fathers. While he may became a great man in Egypt, he never forgot the faith of the fathers. He kept the faith because a mother instructed him just for three years. So mothers who are having a hard time in, in at home now, excuse me, 
uh, just know that you are clo closeted at this time for the best time with your children to nurse, nurse them up, praise them up. Never say no to God. Never say can't when you have a God opportunity. Seize it with both hands for your children. They may be three months old. They may be three years old. They may be 10 and some may be 15 and 20. But you are a nurturing mother. You remember John Wesley's mother had 17 productive dad. And seven died, 10 survived. And John Wesley was a brand plucked out of the fire because the vicarage caught fire. They think an enemy threw fire because he was a political creature and though he was a, a priest of the Anglican Church. And anyway, little John Wesley came out of a window and did that and someone went and brought him down and his, he was saved. So you, mother, you are, with your cry, you are raising up a deliverer. And then Rachel, in pain, after so many years, raising up a Joseph for the nation. So there's a mother who's raising up a Joseph. A mother's cry, a mother's call, the Church of Sri Lanka, Church of Britain, Church of US, Church of Italy, Spain, Germany, France, China. You are raising up a Joseph for such a time as this. Don't be impressed, intimidated, threatened by the might of Babylon, might of China, might of Pharaoh. This COVID time has come about and God has given us a reprieve to get ready for a new world with the same viciousness but he's preparing us he just gave us a window of opportunity to see what vicious plans are on but now he's giving us so the Rachel is birthing her heart desire a Joseph after such a long time and then there's Hannah birthing a Samuel who had no other worldly skills other than hearing the voice of God from young days pouring the oil into that little lamb keeping up in the night and that becomes a flask of oil that will choose the king of Israel and in time to come he anoints David the greatest king of Israel and in David's time Israel because this small nation becomes the most powerful prosperous nation and he begins the concept of bringing treasure to the father's house. David delighted in bringing treasure to the father's house. Any spoil, any tribute, David didn't take into his house. He had no throne. He had no palace. He had no crown. He was a little shepherd boy, lifted up by the Lord. So every treasure he got brought, got, brought to the father's house. So beloved, this is a time bring your treasure to the Father's house. Your energy, your talent, your best effort, bring it to the Father's house. And, the, and, and then from the Father's house, there will be an investment fathers, there would be a diverse teacher, and there would be deployment from the Father's house. So make Father's house great. That's what we are learning. That's right. And this Amy Carmichael said long ago when she made her decision, that she will make God's house glad all the time. She gave her life for it in Donovan, India. She came to Sri Lanka also for a little while. The great Irish lady with great courage, Amy Carmichael, a uh, great servant of God. Uh, so uh, Samuel has no other skill. He has the skill of hearing the voice of God and not letting God's word drop to the ground. And he has the flask of oil. He's a kingmaker. So there are others who are like Daniel, who keep in the presence of God, collecting the oil, collecting the wood, hearing the season, choosing the king, anointing the head of state. And some are called to be Daniel, close to the head of state, wielding the golden sword and given governance. And some are given uh, to be Joseph. Some are given to be Mordecai. Joseph into economic plans and for agriculture, for fisheries, we all the time saying, Lord, bring some Japanese investment for our fisheries, bring some Israeli investments for our agriculture, bring, oh Lord, let other nations look at Sri Lanka with favor. And may each of you take strength for your nation, oh Britain, let your Christian foundations arise and thrive and hold the nation together. And oh America, water, water what a scrape you had and your scrape is still not over let God arise yes and then Samuel chose the king who would make 
uh, Israel great. Now we are blessing our president, head of state, and we are saying, Lord, let him hear your counsel, hear your wisdom. We have done well in Sri Lanka and we have traced every contact of COVID, done surveillance, done quarantine. We have a patch of military people who need to be now quarantined and, and to be treated and so on. And then we bless the task forces uh, that work with the president, let them have wisdom and humility. We bless our health services who have been very stretched, but they have been at it, public health services, they have been at it. The police and the military, they have worked round the clock. God bless them to keep a little island nation safe. Yes, Lord Jesus. So the Samuel's flask of oil, very precious. Then there is a Jabez who is born through pain, but later he becomes a judge. So God bless the judges and may God raise up our judges and the legal profession uh, to be much spoken of for its impartiality, for its erudition, wisdom. God bless Sri Lanka. And there are so many other mothers in their cry, a new pot is born in their womb, in their, uh, in their agony and I believe the agony is turning into ecstasy and a time is coming. From preparation time we are moving into operation time and God will have, we have his way. So this was the morning vision and I saw this plank. I said, what is this plank, Lord? He said, not only the weaker basket, each family is making a plank impenetrable, impervious to the world's moral pollution for Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark is being built and Ham's family is giving a plank and Shem's family is making a plank, Japheth's family is making a plank. And the cradle of Jesus, cradle of Jesus, yes, the little, little, Bethlehem's cradle of Jesus is being made and then this huge monstrous ship, brilliant, very, very prosperous looking ship, the merchant vessel Titanic is saying time is up, we can't have everybody here. Then they start dumping the half millionaires, then they say, then the multimillionaires say dump the millionaires, then it, it's, it's end game, it's survival end game. The fittest survive, you remember the philosophy? The world espoused, Darwin's philosophy, and fittest survive. And then the billionaires say, let the multimillionaires go. We have to survive. Resources are limited in merchant vessel Titanic. They always talk profit, resources, cut down. Yes. And then the multi-billionaires said, if there's only room for us here. And the Church of Jesus Christ, rowing this little boat everywhere, the lifeboat, which Titanic did not have. They are picking up the injured people, people who said, we don't want God, we have it all. People who said that, great moguls of something, the stars of the world, but their hit time has come. Their once colleagues and masters have thrown them, and the church is rowing furiously into all those places and picking them up because God is knocking on the doors. We did it yesterday. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man opens the door, I will come in, sit with him, attend to him at the father's house, appoint him a seat and make him a pot. Flood times, what do you need? Pots that will be impervious to the world's pollution and carry God's hope, God's treasure. Every Christian is going to be that and many are going to knock on that door. Hear the knock of the Good Shepherd and say, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in your heart for me. Please share these clips with your friends. Show them Revelation chapter 13, how the world is ready to mark and how the word of God knew. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 8, the pestilence and the plague. Revelation 18, 10, that everything will stop in a day and a hour. Revelation 18, 22, that music, entertainment, all that will stop. But for such a time as this, God is knocking on the door of every heart. And he is making the pots that will not only survive, will grow the new world of God or the new resources of God in every nation, in every field. God has a staff for you. God wants to give you throne authority. Will you say Lord, yes to the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you please say yes, yes, Lord Jesus? I have a reorientation, I understand. I live just 10% for you. And some of you may say, I, I had no 
known him some time ago, but I had given up. Some of you may say, when I was small, I had fear of God, I had given him up. But when the Titanic is just throwing people out, Titanic is not about redeeming people. It's about how much profit can I keep for myself. That's Titanic. But God's lifeboats are coming and taking in you in. You only have to say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I am ready to be taken over for the destiny that you always had for me. That's what knocking on the door is about. Uh, so we are going to uh, Psalm 113, our daily reading today. Little short psalm, but so fits the day. So I heard these mothers almost breaking into song because the night is over. You remember there's a womb of the dawn Sons will be born, they will be willing. Our regular reading, Psalm 110, and the whole earth is groaning and travailing. Romans 8 28 and 29, whole, whole earth is groaning and travailing. 8 18, 8 20, uh, Romans, because for the manifestations of the sons of God and daughters of God. This is that time, and groaning is producing a better morning. Groaning is producing a better morning. And we want to be on the right side, the Lord's side. 113, yes. Praise the Lord, praise O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, west to east, east to west, God is moving through the nations. Name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. So it's a nation-centered psalm, though it's a small psalm. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is enthroned on high? He humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. So people will begin to feel the high and lofty one is coming to dwell in another place with the humble. So reviving of the heart is the way to go. We learned it the other day. And then this is our God. This is our God. He is looking down on the troubles of the world, which the world created itself. The COVID, the virus, the vaccines, the Mughals, the globalists, the economic uh, uh, terrorism, you know, that some nations are plundering other nations. And the ecological pollution running down of water. Today I, we prayed that if Sri Lanka exports her very potable, very good, clean water, ours is the highest per hectare for the whole world. We can still be rich. Oh Lord, provide our nation with avenues, please. We are praying. So, this time has come. He, the Lord is attending low down. See, he, he, he who is in heaven and mighty and glorious, but is humbling himself to raise the poor from the dust, to lift the needy from the ash heap. What a lot of ash heaps the needy had to go through, isn't it? Ramaging rubbish for food starvation, medicines working against them, health systems working against them, and the globalist system based on power working against them, cost, profit earning for few. But God is looking at the ash heap who created, we did. And the Lord is looking at the dust we created and picking them up, picking them up. Can you understand his pain? Can you understand his pain? We are going there with him. That's the cross. That's the mission. That even as the Father has sent him, he's sending us. John 20, 21. Lift the needy from the ash heap. To make them sit with princes. Do you believe this? That in your little office, like Samuel, little thing you have as a widow, that you'll be able to sit with princes, a humble Mary, Yes, and Simon and Anna in the temple for such a long time. 70 years maybe Anna. She's 84 now. 70 years. Year of Jubilee has come for her. Messiah came right to her doorstep during her years. And Simon said, my eyes are blessed now. I can go to be with the Lord. Yes, that's the time. He makes them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman abide in the house. So this is a time God's house is going to fill up with new children. As a joyful mother of children, 
praise the Lord. So early morning we heard the cry and the labor of intense family feeling. So we interceded for our family. Then every family is intensely meeting and praying family prayer time more time please don't waste your time with the television digital games and such like more time for each other and waiting in the face of God receiving the word of God each of you dad you have to keep the gate of your house yes that's right and then God promises we will become joyful mother of children what a word what a word now some technicalities from Isaiah 40 we got today our read, reading was Isaiah 40 and you know your theology that in Isaiah 40 the evangelical part of Isaiah begins the evangel of Isaiah here is Isaiah 40 comfort comfort oh my people what a scripture after the hectic troubles of Israel comfort comfort oh my people says your God speak kindly to Jerusalem so you must speak kindly to your nation please on FB speak kindly speak Christian let bitterness go out of our comments and our posts call out to her that her warfare has ended this is a time we have to give a moratorium debt moratorium grudge moratorium and, and let the old pass away. We can't take the old and go to the new. Yes, the old grey skies and polluting industries, let them be behind us and our old, old, old grudge taking, sword wielding, spear piercing ways behind us. And we are speaking kindly. Warfare has ended. We can't have fights with anybody, can we? when there's such a battle at hand with COVID virus and other virus and endemic threatening. Who are the threateners? Who are the misleaders? Who are the misled? God can keep both in his hand. Her iniquities have been removed that she had received of the Lord's hand, double fall of sins, a voice is calling. So we must have the voice of a calling voice. In our prayers, intercessions, prophecies, preaching the word of God, in our heart we call as we go through the road or anywhere else people come to our doorstep with such need, we must have a voice of calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. So this is the place that God is preparing. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Is he able? Yes. Only thing he uses us in four different offices. The offices are here in this famous passage that later was quoted about John the Baptist. The offices are here, four offices. Let every valley be lifted up. So there are some who are to work in the valley. God takes it first because the fears, the depression, downtrodden in the valley breaks his heart. And they'll be every church, every Christian will have to move into the valley and lift them up. That's one office, lifting up the valleys and those who dwell in the valleys. Second office, every mountain and hill will be made low. What does it mean? The Daniel, the intelligent one. One, the professor, the businessman, the rich one, the powerful one, God will engineer circumstances by their hearts turning or God turning them. So God offers them first a heart turn, voluntary heart turn. What do you think? What will you opt for? A voluntary heart turn or a God turn? If you attend, agree to a heart turn, it will be better than a hard turn. What do you think? H-E-A-R-T turn, H-A-R-D turn. So let's pray for all your friends, relatives, all our neighbors, uncles, aunts, our cousins, nephews, nieces, everybody will pray for a heart turn. They will voluntarily turn. Yeah. So mountains made low to serve others. Third of is, let the rough ground become plain. What is that? rough ground becomes smooth so here are people who maybe it's agriculture maybe it's the, the places where nothing would survive or nothing would thrive god is bringing in his agency you know in the wilderness healing a mirror the desert shall bloom valley of beka turns into a valley of beraka the people who are able to work like that then the fourth of is the, uh, and the rugged terrain a broad valley so it looks sounds like engineers and architects and doctors and lawyers in a rugged terrain where nobody can live or everybody has to hang on to something by the by just cling lest they fall 
and God is working to make a broad valley. What do you think? Where do you think your office is? In the valley with the lowly, lifting them up, rescue the perishing, care for the dying, doctors, job is like that, nurses, midwives, everybody, and those who go to the poor and the needy, you may be called like that. Or you are in a mountain place, but God is making you. And you are telling others in a high mountain, you know, big, big jobs, big places, how they can come down to help. You see? What, what do you think is your office? In every office, God is working. Four kinds of. So if you are in a, in a significant place, thank God for it. You are a Daniel, you are a Joseph, you are a Mordecai, significant place. But Nehemiah is more like the valley person. But you are in a significant place, you will tell your colleagues, you might even train your boss, you might say, Sir, a hard turn is better than a hard turn. He may agree with you and say, yes, uh, please let me know how I can know this Lord Jesus Christ. But he's knocking on every door. He's not, he's giving a chance to everybody. He doesn't consider their reputation or what they have been up to. He, uh, he forgets the past and he knocks on every door. Highest, the mightiest, the worst, the most brilliant, most criminal in every nation. He's doing this. Every nation, even in China, he's doing this. In US, UK, Australia, God bless that land with that Prime Minister. May they have brotherly relationships with us and may they send a lot of investment. And my heart and spirit always go to Japan that are so injured in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Lord, let them return in. Millions and millions come to Christ in Japan because of the threat that seemingly is out there. Let them come to Christ and be safe, O oh Lord. So then that's a mountain people coming low. Then the, those who are able to take the rough ground, make it plain and make anything grow. I like to consider it as agriculture, that kind of productive, the seas, the aquatic resources and so on. The Joseph kind of thing, you know. And the next one, rugged terrain to broad valley, the engineers and the architects, the structural people. God bless them all. Okay, uh, it's a little long, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, all flesh will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord is, and the voice says, call out. This voice is calling out, don't delay. From preparation, we are going to operation. Isaiah 40, verse 6, a voice says, call out. Then he answered, what shall I call out? Then the Lord calls out and says, oh, grass, uh, though it's lovely, the f flower is lovely, it'll fade away. So what did COVID prove? All good looking grass, all fine looking flower, glorious and or famous, all faded away. Spook, entertainment, stage, Hollywood, Las Vegas, Macau, all faded away, isn't it? Yes, it teaches us humility. So what will the post-COVID world be? Bible says the wicked will continue to be wicked. They'll double up their effort to get hold of the nations. But nations will be ready. God gave a warning there and showed the plan. Some people are waiting to control the whole world with a chip here and 5G there, but God is up to it. Grass with us, the flower fades. Breath of the Lord did it. Grass with us, the flower fades. But the word of God stands. Get yourself up on a high mountain. So we are to get ourselves in an audible place. And Zion, bear our good news. Lift up your voice. Don't be soft anymore. Lift up your voice. Oh, Jerusalem, bear our good news. They will say church has good news. Church has good solutions. Lift it up. Do not fear. Here is your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him. His recompense is before him. Like a shepherd, the mighty one, the king, the sovereign, he comes like a shepherd. He will tend his flock. In his arm he will gather his lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Can you understand God's nature? He's calling everyone, low-born, high-born, well-placed, ill-placed, to learn the shepherd's nature and be a shepherd to your immediacy. Neighbors, your street, we have taken the position. Uh, we are the sacred, secret place of the Most High and God Almighty, El Shaddai, His covering covers 
all we put our hand to his covering covers bless the lord oh my soul we have a brother dear friend their company is agricultural they are 10,000 laborers 10,000 staff working and it's still functioning every day 24 7 for exports thank god thank god thank god another company 5470 on the payroll and they're in the most risky places but not none not one of the staff has got covid thank god thank god thank god god is able he's a shepherd and teaching us to be the shepherd then of course isaiah 40 12 onward this this one chapter needs a book you know isaiah 12 well, I said 40 verse 12 onwards is about his majesty of the creation then he comes down to the nations I said 40 verse 15 behold the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are regarded as a speck of dust on the scales behold he lifts up the islands like fine dust we want to put Sri Lanka there he lifts up Sri Lanka like fine dust so uh, no nation is adequate to serve him but every nation will serve him yeah he considers big or small God protects them all to whom then will you liken God what likeness will you compare him yes so we are looking to him to be our sovereign be our shepherd thank you father we take courage in you whole chapter is excellent but i have to stop now i have to stop now 29 he gives strength to the weary to whom he lacks might he increases power so don't be withdrawn don't say don't say, be shy whatever god offers to you take it with both hands and do it now this preparation the operation will soon begin and you'll have to be active and effective on your feet flowing together with the purpose of god purpose of god will not wither away will not wilt away even if the weak takes it the ignorant take it they'll become wise they'll become strong increase the power though youth grow weary and tired vigorous young men stumble but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as the eagles they will run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint thank you for joining God be with you mm -hmm.